Alex from Ace Attorney Investigations, Miles Edgeworth, one last episode. We continued our investigations in the final case of the game, and today we will be doing just that once again. We are now at the open air stage. I've left the door master second investigation to Francesca and returned to Babel. I said this is my first total of business. Should we look into the Babel Sash statue? Mr. Edgeworth! It's okay, what situation? Oh, it's great! Investigating is so much fun! In other words, they've made absolutely no progress. We weren't goofing off, honest sir! Uh huh. We've been investigating our hearts out! Very well then. Would you kind of give me an update on your investigation? <laughs> He's got nothing. Um. Oh! We had a really fun time, sir! I knew it. Zero progress. In any case, Detective Gumshoe. Yes, sir! You have permission to enter the Arby at Bastion Embassy, is that correct? Yep! As a local detective, I'm helping out with the investigations on both sides, sir! Good. In that case, I can leave these pieces of evidence with you. They belong to the lady under the pink princess's mask. The pink princess? What kind of lady we're playing her, sir? The kind that also was playing the role of the pink badger yesterday. Oh! Oh, understood, sir. If I happen to run into her, I'll give them back to her. And if I don't, then I'll guess I'll unload them somewhere. Evidence that is lost. Are <laughs> you giving the detective going to shoot? Now then, don't believe I'll be needing this anymore, either. What? I really don't want him to throw that on I mean, you can have it if you want. Yes, because that's still somewhere it was a fake. Wait, what? What do you mean by fake? Now then, I believe it's time for a little housekeeping. Unnecessary evidence has been removed, remaining evidence has been rearranged. Okay, so what's left? We have... The embassy guide... The bo the notes on the body... The knife... The key... The second of the three paper documents... The s one of the two statues, the other statue... I don't know what these could possibly have anything to do with. But see, that, that's the thing. Like, at this point, I'm like, okay, I know it. I know this has some relevance, but I have absolutely no guess as to what relevance it could have. Okay. Well, the only person we haven't heard from- What? Hey, you're not going back to the Bible already, are you? Do not get us. Don't even got the bit before. Okay, well, yeah, how- I, I can't- Oh, I can't- Eh. Eh. I can't, I can't go down any further because I'm gonna go in the way they don't want me to go, so I gotta, like, inch around Gumshoe to get over here. Because I have- we haven't spoken to you yet. Ah, oh, so you're back now, are you, Mr. Edgeworth? You must be tired. Here, with these, you can eat whatever you like. And these are? Just down tickets for our cafeteria. They open tomorrow at 10 in the morning. I appreciate the concern. However, these coupons do not do nothing for me right now. Okay, let's let's have a chat. This open our stage. What function does it serve exactly? Well, normally we use it for a variety of events. It's all to attract that extra bit of attention to Babel. I hear that tonight, over in the Albastian Rose Garden, Ambassador Alba was to give a speech. And you know what? May told me I really should give a speech too. Mr. Cochin told you that? Yes, he did. Which is why I thought I should give a speech of my own. But unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Because of the fire the Yadagrasu started. Exactly. Ambassador Pagliano, I'd like to ask you a little more about the primitive statues. Oh, I see. Well, let me ask you this. Did you know that Arbast and Babel used to be one country called Canopia? Yes, I know that much about your history. Well, the primitive statue belongs to the founders of Canopia. At least, that's how the story goes. It was bequeathed unto the king of Canopia as a symbol of the country's wealth. So it was meant as a symbol of sovereignty and the right to rule, I take it? Yes, that's right. Which is why both countries are so adamant about their claim. We hold the real statue, therefore we hold the right to rule is the reasoning. It's pretty petty when you think about it, though, I suppose. But if Albast and Ababa were to re-establish relations, shouldn't that put an end to the squabbling over the statue? I have no reason to believe so. The brand new statue is even more important now as a key to diplomacy. I wonder if Ambassador Pagliano knows about what has happened to this very important key to diplomacy. Perhaps I should try showing him this key and see what he has to say about it. Alright, well then let's do just that. That's not the one. We're looking for the other statue. Ambassador Pagliano, if you could please take a look at this for me. The primitive statue sitting in our bust right now actually belongs to Babel. So it would appear. I've seemed to call Miss Von Kramer about this earlier. Then you will understand why I wish to inspect Babel's primitive statue, primitive statue immediately. Because the statue currently in your country position. Yes, well, I've already inspected it myself. It is definitely our best statue. I know because it's the real statue. And you're saying the Bubbles was a replica? I'm embarrassed to say it's true, even though I knew that someday it would be exposed. Receive my orders from the leaders of Babel, and I was to negotiate with Ambassador Alba at this event. I was to negotiate with him and fix the results of the evaluation tonight. To say that we could not determine which statue was the real one. Why are you telling me this? Well, because you already figured it out. Our statue is just a hollow gold shell. Even if Babel were to lose face, the reunification of the country is what's important. I'm right in thinking that, aren't I? I'm not making a mistake, right? If you don't know yourself, then I won't pretend to know either. I never thought that by being betrayed by my own secretary, the real symbol of wealth would be given to me. Isn't it simply ironic? 
Okay, well, that's enough out of you. Oh, wait, no, there's still one more thing we can say. A boss of Paliano, there's just one thing I'd like to ask you about. Yes, so, oh, don't worry, you can ask me more than just one thing. How about... How about just two or three? In exchange, I expect you'll be coming to Babel, yes? Th thank you, but just the one thing is all I require. Medicochin, I'd like to ask you about the, about this man who is your secretary. Sure, sure, I'll tell you what I know. Thank you for your cooperation, Ambassador. He was... well, if I had to put it in one word, he was an able man. If there was ever anything I needed as an ambassador, he was able to get it for me. To think that a man like that had a hand in a smuggling ring right under my nose going completely unnoticed. Actually, I suppose because he was an able man, I was unable to detect his dirty dealings. Hmm, it sounds like Mr. Cochin had a very sharp mind. Recently, Manny had been really busy. Since I became with the Babali Surf representative at the Country Unification Council, he's been working tirelessly to cover my work for me. I'm oh, sorry, but what is this Country Unification Council? Oh, well, you see, how tonight's events proceeded without a hitch, our two countries were to reunify and become one again. But I guess with how things turn out, that dream won't be realized anytime soon. Hmm, I suppose not. Alright, well, that was a good chat. Uh, can we talk to you as well? Mr. Edgeworth! You look like you're enjoying yourself, Detective. Well, I don't know much else I'd enjoy as much as a good investigation, sir. Sue, what did you find out? Uh, well... <laughs> I think he has found nothing of any particular use, as usual. Well, we already knew that. I'm guessing this isn't going to yield any results, because we already know his investigation update is no progress. Hey, Mr. Edgeworth, I guess something really interesting for Ambassador Pagliano. Oh, and what is this something interesting? This, sir. Wow, that's so pretty! I'm so jealous, that's a real treasure there! What is a flame burn green, detective? So apparently if you burn that special wood crystal oil that they only make in Babel, it burns this green color, sir. Interesting, so it's a special property of the oil. I suppose this is a ploy to force people to visit Babel should the oil run out. Hey, Gummy! What about these silhouettes? They stuck, they stuck some cutouts on the outside of the lantern so they to project the images. Oh, silhouettes, hmm? They are rather pretty, are they? Wait, what am I doing? I'm supposed to be asking for an opportunity for investigation. Hey, what's wrong, sir? There's something I want you to investigate for me. Do you think you could do that much? Uh-huh. You got it, sir. Hey, that's not fair. Why is Gummy getting to do all the fun stuff? Uh, well, that's because I'm Mr. Edgeworth's partner. Ah, I can't believe you took advantage of the confusion and stole my role assistant. Uh, okay. For what it's worth, Gumshoe was there long before you showed up. I expect the two of you to get along and work together like professionals on this. Well, that shouldn't be too hard. In theory. Hey, where are you going? Are you heading back to Alast? Yes, but before I do, I suppose I, give, I should give you a summary of what's happened. Oh, I see! There's been a murder in both countries using an object from the other country? That's the gist of it. Babel is just as strict as Alast, in the inspection of the people and the things that enter the country, meaning that somehow both murder weapons were smuggled into the two countries. That's the only logical conclusion that can be drawn. Perhaps the key to the weapon smuggling is the person who traversed both countries. You mean the fake Yadagarasu? In one way or another, the Yadagarasu was connected. Of this I am sure. Now then, where was the Yadagarasu first spotted? I, I believe it was the Rose Garden on the Alabastian side of the embassy. The garden that is just, just on the other side of this boundary. It's where Ambassador Alla was to give a speech tonight. At least, that's where I heard the Yadagarasu had appeared. I'm lucky, so I believe it's the final that I investigate the Rose Garden post haste. Wait, before you go, take a look at this, Mr. Edward. The guitar pick? What, what is it? I guess it's a guitar pick! I picked it up just now over there. Do you think it'll be of any use? There was a little water on it, but how did the water get on it? It doesn't look like there's anything that could get wet from around here. I was thinking! I have concerts here at this open air stage from time to time, right? Alright, I'll find it sooner or later. Okay. Again, something I have no idea how it's going to be relevant, but we know it's going to be. Oh yeah, one more thing! Mr. Treasurer, would you really hold on to this? What is this? It's misused per- yeah, you, you, Why do you have misused perfume? I thought one day be if somebody's dragging her down, so I kept save all this- Seven years you've held on to this one bottle perfume? 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 How- Okay. Thank you. I'll be honored to hold on to it for you. Yeah, I'll be honored to hold on to this seven-year-old bottle of perfume. That's a wonderful idea. Okay. Oh. I guess we're going this way. I, I can't believe we missed the opportunity to talk to Lotta Hart. She was right here! We could've talked to Lotta! And now she's just gone! Okay, we go. I think I'll be returning to the discussion of us now, but. I know, I know! I'll go back to Babel and do some more investigating there! Is it gonna be Lang or. Uh, Tyrell Bad? Neither! Ah! Francisca Von Karma, the best partner. How are things in Babel? Although, I can't really say I expect much from Scruffy and that girl. The investigation into Manny Cochin's death hasn't really progressed any. However, the investigation into the Yadagravasu has. 
Ah, yes, the Yadagarasu. Even now, I find it hard to believe. A person who can freely traverse between the two countries at will? Preposterous. But that's what I came here to investigate. I heard that this is where the Yad witnesses came to have seen the Yadagarasu. That's correct. Ambassador Abba was to give a speech tonight in Outlast. And that's when the Yadagarasu appeared. The shadow of the mysterious sleep appeared, and just as suddenly, it vanished. After that, there was the fire at the Babylonian Embassy that the Yadagarasu started. We didn't start the fire. I thought that not a single feather from the Yadagarasu should have skipped my diligence. Okay, begin investigation. Alright, what can we do? Ugh. Every time I think I'm out, he pulls me back in. Have you finished checking out all the bystanders? Yes, sir, and we found 14 counts of pickpocketing, 16 counts of illegal parking, and one point person red light, sir. Don't tell me you didn't find out anything related to the case. Sorry, not a single thing, sir. Well, for now, let's just get those other lawbreakers out of the precinct. Agent Lang. Well, if it isn't Mr. Prosecutor, I would just like to thank you for your assistance earlier. Make no mistake. It's like I was trying to help you with what I did. After I lifted, you received word from Ambassador Alba. With a wrap of our bodyguards slammed the end of today. Oddly enough, we received word from HQ to return home on an urgent matter. <laughs> As if I can be so easily called away from this case after I've come this far. I swear that I'll find the truth and drag it out screaming into the light. You're with me on that, right, Mr. Prosecutor? Alright, let's have a chat. You were working as Ambassador Alba's bodyguard at the time, so naturally you witnessed when the Yadagavasu appeared, correct? Yeah, I saw the thief, alright. With my own with my own eyes. Yeah, wait, the bo Larry! Can, can, just for once, can can you try entering a room the, the normal way? Maybe through a door or or, or it's an archway or something? Not descending down from the sky or rising up from the pool? Larry! How dare you surprise me like that! I'm sorry! Oh, hey, Angie, thanks for what you did back there! Your gratitude alone is enough. More importantly, Larry, this pool is not for your personal enjoyment. I know that! Do you think I'm just happy? Yes! Yes, I do! Alright then, did you, by chance, fall into the pool? Nice guess, but no dice! So you know my son, right? What?! Your son?! You do not have a son! No, absolutely not! You do not have a son! You must be talking about, like, the, the Steel Samurai son or something. You imbecile! How can you be so flippant at a time like this? What are you going to do if your son fell into the pool? And how old is this child of yours anyway? Huh? Oh, how old is he again? Larry, this is the first I've heard of a son. Who exactly is the mother? The mother? Oh, I checked the pink princess! The pink princess? Mr. Von Karma, I was a bit confused by this man's word for a bit there. Well, I believe what he's looking for is the door of the army. Okay, that's what I was. I, I was about to say. If 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 between the the end of the of the trilogy and the start of this game, Larry had a son or had had a kid with somebody, and I I was about to quit right then and there. That's that's just no, 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 and absolutely, and I'm just 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 for, just just for, just, just, for, just for one more no for good measure. Larry, we have not seen hide nor hair of the Iron Infant, but rest assured that if we should find him, we'll let you know. Now get out of there. Sounds good, in that case, I'll go search over there. H hey, wait! I, I didn't say go back down into the pool, you imbecile! <sighs> and though he's not related to the murders, he sure knows how to cause a lot of trouble. Because when something smells, it's usually the butts. Okay, what else can we look at here? There's a statue. Statues are interesting. Hmm, a statue of a woman. I wonder if the lady is pouring water. It says it is a statue of the queen who spoke of love to King Primadu. Hmm. Well, Miles said you. It seems you are lousy at reading a woman's heart. I opened my mouth about a statue. She somehow made a leap to that. No. Is it possible that the other guys are hidden in these bushes? Of course not. They're rose bushes. You've been spending so much time with Scruffy and that girl. They're rubbing up on you. But it's all right. I'll wake you out of your stupor. No, Francisco. Now, the next time you feel like sleep talking, remember that I'll whip you for real. All I tried to do was offer a possibility. This is what I get. Okay. Uh. Well, is there anything else over here that's interesting? There's another statue. Hmm. The statue bears the resemblance to the Prima Du statue. The plaque says King Prima Du in the battlefield. In order to save the queen, King Prima Du put his life on the line and went to war. So Prima Du was actually a person of royal blood. I thought he was simply someone imitating a character from an ancient legend. Well, what surprises me is that a real person who looked like the Steel Samurai existed. I suppose that's that too. A sudden appearing, suddenly appearing and disappearing shadow of the Yadagarasu. I believe I've figured out this true or oh, is it the, sha uh, the, the statues? I expected no less from my subordinate. 
Let's see what you know on the sudden. Sudden pit. A very good. Is that possible that it was created by the statue? Ah. Water. Okay. Are you playing me for a full Miles Edgeworth? This statue has absolutely no resemblance to the. Well, maybe if we. Maybe, maybe if we combine the two statues. Because this, this one seems to be at a bit of an odd angle, so maybe if we combine it with like the. Do I have the pic? Actually, do we have a picture of it in the court organizer? We do not. That's sad. I, I bet if we combine the two, it'll it'll form the picture. You'll come back to me, but this statue about one part of the whole picture. What do you mean by only one part? What is the other part of the real form? That would be the statue over here. Guarantee if you combine these two, we get the the image that we saw, or the shadow that we saw. It's another statue. The autographs of shadow was made from the sta shadows of these two statues. Made? What do you mean by that? Right now, the spotlights are all over the place. This is because they were moved when the guests were in a panic state. However, if we were to restore the lights to the way they were when the thief appeared, you believe that the two shadows will recreate the Yadagarasu shadow? Precisely. Now then, watch as I reveal the true form of the Yadagarasu. First, if we set up a spotlight to cast a shadow of King Primidu in the battlefield, the shadow of the King statue would appear on the backdrop of the stage. Likewise, if we set a light up on the Queen who spoke the love of the King Primidu, the shadow would also appear on the backdrop of the stage. Aha! So if we were to combine the two shadows. That did not go as according to plan. Do we have a picture of that shadow by chance? No, of course not. Why? Why would we have a picture of the shadow? That that just that man that, that would make too much sense. Okay. So it, it seems like like the, the picture of the of the king statue seemed to be pretty close to from 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 my memory. It seemed pretty close to it. So what what are we missing here? Like, there, there was hair, right? There was a bit of, like, hair coming out of the back end of it. So, maybe... Ah! Maybe it was, like, an enlarge... They, they set up the spotlight so they would enlarge the hand on the... On the... The back... The back drop. How do you explain this grotesque shape? Calm down, Francisco. The way the light on the light... The way the light shot needs to be shown in the screen statue is wrong. What do you mean by that? I believe that the whole of this king statue the shadow needs to be used to walk. However, in the case of the greater, I believe a whole shadow is needed. Rather, the person who created the shadow you only use one part of the shadow. Only one part? Yes. No, yup, it's the hand. Why'd you sit in the first place? You're white. I apologize. Now, what part it would be the hand? Think back. Think back. Five long thin arrows, correct? Now, what does that remind you of? Ah. That's right, it can only be the shadow of the Queen's left hand. Francis, can we please adjust the spotlight positions so that it only shines on the Queen's left hand? Alright, let's give it a try and see what we get. It's... Hmm. This is exactly like the shadow I saw. The culprits must have changed the spotlight's position beforehand, and then pulled the plug after people saw what the culprit wanted them to see. In their panic, the guests must have moved the spotlights around, which, can, which we can assume was also part of the culprit's plan. By the time the lights came back on, the other grass of shadow had vanished. Which means that the shadow was a construct from the very beginning. So you see, the Yadagarasu never did visit Arbas tonight. The only country that the thief visited was our Babel, although it can be assumed that the Yadagarasu had an accomplice in Arbas. An accomplice? But who? I haven't figured that out yet, but I assume it was the person who set up the shadow show. It- I sense that the biggest clue yet to solving this case is the existence of the accomplice. Investigation complete! Alright then. Hey! This is bad. How have you come to join us in investigating the Adagarasu? I've left the murder in Agent Lang's charge. And my only target from the very beginning is the Adagarasu. So, yes. So, what have you found out? I got a piece of evidence. May I see it? Sure. We're here because we are ready to face whatever may come. So, if you please. What? People heard the commotion. Bystanders started gathering. And one woman claimed. I'm telling you, I'm a genuine international journalist. I guarantee you that's Lada. That, that's why I did that voice, because I guarantee you it's a lot of heart! She gave me an interesting picture. A journalist? Well, actually, she's a freelance cameraman. This is the photo I got from her. What in the world? The Yannick Rossi was flying through the air. Ah, uh, no. Game, you, you've tried it twice before to convince me that people have flown through the air. Once in turn about Big Top, and then again in Bridge of the Turnabout. Now, whereas in the first, in the former, you actually did something even stupider than that. Like, it actually would have made more sense in that case if he actually had flown through the air than the bullshit they came up with for that stupid circus case. I'm never living that down, by the way. But I'm, I'm never, I'm never going to let anybody forget about that stupid circus case. 
but the second case, we made it very clear, and no, did not fly over that bridge. So, um, I don't think we can turn the picture upside down this time. Don't think that's gonna work out too well. The times, they are changing. It's not just man, but evidence, even they lie to us now. What well, one was this photo taken? Apparently right after the fires in the fourth and fifth floors were put out. It was taken from a nearby building that you can see the embassy from. I see, so this was taken after the fire. Photo of Yadagarasu data jotted on my organizer. The blue in this picture took off from the Babylonian embassy. There's no way it's actually the Yadagarasu. I mean, so there's no- that's like, that's probably just something- like, some object that was, like, slingshotted over, like, like, Angry Birds. You just slingshotted some kind of object over that to, to create- Because it's all an illusion, right? We know that the shadow was created- like, the, the, the shadows and the statues were created to give the illusion that the Yadagarasu was actually here. So I'm imagining this is probably also the case, like, with this- with this flying thing. This is simply not possible. People are capable of flight. So the fact, I've had the pleasure of dealing with a case involved- Oh, sh my god, shut up about that stupid circus case. Actually, get to think, but I come across a case like that as well. Two actually, yeah. And for one, for one of them, you were the prosecutor, and for the other one, you, at you, Edge was with a defense attorney temporarily, and you, Francisca, were the prosecutor. So you definitely should have been able to come to that conclusion immediately. Maybe it happens more often than we think. Am I up to the task of solving the mystery behind this photograph? Well, the other grass took off from the Babylon Embassy, so I should start from there. Francisca, I need to return to the Babylon investigation for a bit. All right. And let's go back. I'll continue investigating on this side of the building. Alright, I'm counting on you. Welcome back, Mr. Edgeworth! Now come on, let's get back to our investigation! Yes, let's. Alright then, let's head on over here. And in we go. I said in we go. Uh, nope, that's wrong. Wrong. Okay. So where can we go from here? Can we go anywhere? We can go through these doors. March 14th, 10.37pm, Babylon's Embassy, Secretary's Office. To think after all that running around, we're right back where we started! It would appear that way. Hi, Mr. Edgeworth. Have you found Manny's killer yet? I'm totally sorry, Ambassador Padeon, but I have yet to find his killer. Then I guess his murder really was the work of the Yadagarasu. I've got one thing straight, it was the work of the fake Yadagarasu! The real Yadagarasu was a noble vigilante who was only out to steal the truth! Miss Faraday, please don't make such a sad face. If there's anything I can do for you, all you have to do is ask, alright? Mr. Pagliano! Actually, there is one thing we can do. Will you allow us to take another look around? We didn't have enough time to conduct a thorough investigation earlier. Oh, sure. Please feel free to investigate to your heart's content. Also, there are a few questions I'd like to ask you personally, Ambassador. If you'll bring a smile back to Miss Faraday's face, then I'll gladly answer anything. Thank you, Mr. Pagliano. You're a total gentleman. Ah, you don't have to waste such nice words on me, little miss. Hey, Sir Pagliano! Those two sure got me off the quick. You know, it's easy to say we're going to investigate, but where should we begin? We should probably start by comparing the state of this room before and after the fire. And then... Yeah, when I came into this room, that person was already gone. And I wanted to bet that that person I was chasing is Mr. Cogent's killer. I don't know that yet. However, it's hard to believe that the person is unrelated. Furthermore, because the key of the autographs was stole seven years ago was found here, it signals that perhaps Mr. Skew was also involved somehow. I knew it! That one was almost definitely Mr. Cogent's killer! Yet again, we don't know that. There are too many mysteries to be solved in this case. Speaking of the Yadagrasso and mysteries, I've received the most mysterious photo from Detective Bad. Uncle Bad? He's taking part in the investigation too? Yes, he has been chasing after the Yadagrasso for all these years. Uncle Bad! No, then, I was told that this photo was taken just after the fire. Well, what? This guy looks like the person in the long coat I was chasing! Does this mean that I was chasing the fake Yadagrasso after all? I don't know the answer to your question, but I don't think people can fly either. But this could be how that person escaped! Well, we need to investigate a bit more before we can say anything about that. In any case, let's not dawdle anymore and pick up our investigation where we left off. Uh, well, the first thing I want to do is talk to you. Because Edgeworth said he had some questions to personally ask you. No, then, Ambassador, I'd like to ask you about your movements before the fire broke out. Before the fire? Which fire are you talking about? Which one? There was more than one tonight? Huh? Oh, I see. I guess you didn't hear about it either. We had two fires here. Two fires? Wait, but the only fire we know about is the one after the Jam and Ninja show! Oh, well, the first occurred at the start of the Jam and Ninja show. Luckily, only the fourth and fifth floors of the embassy caught on fire. Not wanting to cause a panic among the theater goers, we decided to keep it in turn. That's not how you- no, you don't keep a fire in turn. It's like, mm, we won't tell anybody about the fire, that's just- no, you- mm -hmm. Exactly. So the fire witness was the second one. Come to think of it, didn't Detective Bob make reference to the first fire? W when was this photo taken? Apparently, right after the fires on the 4th and 5th floor were put out. I suppose this means that the photo was taken just after the first fire was put out. Okay. Interesting. 
So then what about the extent of the damage of the second fire? The second fire was contained to this floor, the third floor. I think it was leftover embers from the fire and the floors above it that caused it. That's, how should I put it, a very bad stroke of luck. My office in the fifth floor, Manny's office here. And Manny himself all gone in the blink of an eye. Alright then. That's nice. I feel so sorry for you, Mr. Pagliano. Oops, look at me going on and on. Now then, what was it you wanted to ask again? We were discussing what your auctions and whereabouts were for today were. And if you happen to do, what was the coaching's auctions and whereabouts as well? Yes, very well. Let's see. I've been quite busy all day from morning until now. First, I woke up at night, brushed my teeth. After that, I had a roll for breakfast. Fascinating. How about if you just skip to the relevant parts for me? Oh, you're like a condensed version. All right, I can do that for you. Well, we're gonna have to ask him about individual morning and afternoon activities. So, what did Mr. Coaching and you do this morning? Well, originally we were supposed to meet and shake hands with the German Ninja, but Manny and I wanted to turn it into a photo op, so we were here tidying up his office. You helped clean Mr. Coaching's office? Why were you not cleaning your own? Oh, I think I forgot to mention this, but my office is currently undergoing renovations. Okay, that's good to know. Which is why both the Primitive Statue and the Babylonian Knife were set out down here. I see. Oh, but on the tidying didn't take much, really. We just burned through some files we no longer needed and expired coupons in the fireplace. I bet cleaning up the fire was a bit of real pain, though, huh? Ah, about that. I kind of forgot to clean the ashes out. So you cleaned the fireplace, but you forgot to clean the ashes out of the fireplace. Oh, boy. An ambassador like himself has been all the receiving end of a secretary Zanga. Oh, he was very good at being very mad. Why, even just this morning he got mad at me. I spilled some Babylese ink onto the black wall when I was burning the files, you see. And he got mad at me, saying I should treat the ink with more respect. Under the back wall. Okay. That's about it for what we did this morning. Just some cleaning. Don't tell me you had no other work to do, being an ambassador and all. Yeah, it's a bit strange. Nothing, if you could tell me what you and Mr. Coaching did this afternoon. Well, Manny and I went down together to the theater of New Trails. We had to be there for the start of the Steel Samurai stage show. After the show started, I went back to my office on the fifth floor alone. So they were together until the start of the Steel Samurai show. A little while late, after I had straightened myself up a bit, I returned to the theater. Because I was to take part in the photo op on stage at the end of the show. Hmm, the was a commemorative photo op at the end. It was a fantastic photo of the three of us, Ambassador Alba, the Steel Samurai, and myself. After the photo shoot, I went back to my office on the fifth floor to repair for my handshake photo op with the Jammin' Ninja. He seems to be rather overlooked for an ambassador. When I got to my office, that's when I first fire broke out and I escaped down the stairs. My office was completely destroyed, but thankfully no one was hurt. But during the second one, I pitched in and helped the MC staff put it out. So you didn't see Mr. Coaching again after the start of the Samurai show? Yeah, that's right. The next time I saw him, he was lying there in an eternal sleep. I see. Ambassador Padano, I thank you very much for your help. I'm sorry I couldn't be of more assistance, Mr. Edgeworth. If there's anything else, please don't hesitate to ask, alright? Yeah, this guy's way too nice to not be evil. That, 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 that's, that, that's the general rule of thumb, is if someone's acting too nice, you know that they're probably on the, they're, they're probably behind this the whole time, okay? So, uh, the only thing we didn't really check, aside from this burnt up window over here, is this table. I don't think we looked at this table at all. It appears that this area was heavily damaged by the fire. Yeah, I guess we should hurry up and get started examining everything! I look at this suspected every special looking new Well, this is the... We have one of these things, right? We have... Yeah, we have, this is one of the Babylese Ink things we have. This is the bottle of Babylese Ink on Mr. Coaching's desk. And also, like there's still a lot of ink left inside. The seal is unbroken, so the fire probably couldn't get into the bottle to burn up the ink. Hey, Mr. Pagliano, looks like your precious Babylese Ink is alright after all. What's that, son? Ambassador, what do you mean by that? Uh, it's just that there is something strange about the ink. Would you mind elaborating on that statement for me, please? Um, I had to go back. I had to go all the way back over there to talk to him to get him to say it, talk about it. I wonder if you might tell me what you noticed about Mr. Coaching's bottle of ink. Uh, I just thought of it right now, but during the second fire, Manny was worried about it in his office, so he came rushing back to it. I called out to him, and when I received no reply, I used my spare key to open the door. But when I did, I was greeted by roaring, gleam, green flames. The flames were so big, I wasn't able to see into the room at all. Well, that's because of the, the lantern thing. The fire was green. What was the cause? Yeah, that's what I thought. Hmm. A bubbly sink is made from the same oil, which means it would also burn green. You know... I, too, had thought it was Manny Sink that had caught on fire, so that's when I was surprised to find that there was still a bottle of ink left on his desk. The case of the perplexing green flames! Talk about a mystery! What exactly was it that caught on fire in here? I'm sure we'll find it eventually. Okay, well, let's go back over to- that's annoying. The, you know, it's annoying I had to investigate something over here- no, I had to talk to him, investigate something over here, and go back and talk to him to get information about something we investigated over here. What a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um... 
There's a drawer that's kind of half open here. It would appear that this disc also fell victim to the fire. But it's not too much damage. Oh, I think we can rifle through this, this, this drawer a bit. Hmm, I suppose we really should take a look. Okay, what is that thing? This is a rather usual shape for an unusual shape for a notepad. This was just one minute assuming you from somewhere. It's a notepad? Oh, wait, is it the the other end of this? The, the thing that we have? Oh, you know what? That's what it is. That's exactly what it is. Is this almost. Yes, yes, it is. It was. It looks like this. It's the shape of this notepad, not just the shape of this note we found. Hey, you're right! What is it? Let's say it's something straight at a monument value! Ah, yes, the notepad is a souvenir from somewhere in your country. We've been collecting them for the purpose of studying them, you see. Yes, I do. You do seem to be quite passionate about it. Oh, would you like to see my souvenir collection? I'd love to show it to you. Are you sure they haven't been burnt to a crisp by the fires? About the Paliano, I wonder if you might recognize the handwriting on this note. Hmm, this looks like Manny's handwriting. I see. In that case... Oh, did you figure something out? This note was found in Albas. Specifically, it was found being firmly grasped by the murdered Damask II. Damask II? Then this note! Yes, it was a request from Mr. Cochin for Mr. Damask II to steal the Primitive Statue. What? Manny tried to steal that Mask Primitive Statue? We would know for sure if we could write a handwriting analysis. Ambassador, do you have any documents that were handwritten by Mr. Cochin? Yes, I can gather a few and give them to you. I'll have to ask the technical machine later to run the analysis. I can't believe that Manny would even think of doing something like this. Do you have any ideas to why he would have requested the theft of the statue? There is one possibility, but mind you, it's just my personal speculation. Anything you can tell me why uh, you can tell me anything you can tell me would be a great help, Ambassador. And we gotta go back over and walk to him again, okay. Would have been great if he could just just, you know, told us right then and there. I pretty think you said you might have an idea as to why Mr. Kuchin hired Damas the second. Actually, I fear it may be my fault. As I was telling you earlier, we were to determine which statue was the real one as a part of today's event. But because of the Yadagrasu and the fire here, that got cancelled, didn't it? Yeah, I'm actually relieved the rest of the event has been cancelled. But you see, Bobble's statue, well, it's just a replica. And did Mr. Coach know that about Bobble's primitive statue? Uh, of course he knew. We have to do something once our statue was revealed as a replica. And to be expected, I was very nervous today as this would impact our country's authority. You still understand. Well, when he told Manny my concerns, he said, let me handle it, it'll be alright. I'll find a way to make sure you're the ambassador of the reunited Canopia. At the time, I thought he was just trying to cheat me up. But when I saw that note, I realized he was serious. Mr. Cochin conducted a lot of business behind your back. I assume he did all that to ensure you are the next Canopian ambassador. But what was he trying so hard, I wonder? He was so much better at getting things done than I was or ever will be. I don't know the answer to why he was trying so hard yet, but I suspect he had an ulterior motive in mind beyond just a simple kindness. Oh! Here you are, Mr. Edgeworth! Zeke Gumshu, have you collected the information that I requested? Yep! Got it all right here, sir! Here you go, Kay! Don't forget to take a look! It's for you, after all! What is all this, gummy? It's all the information on this room I got from the Embassy and the Interpol people! Oh, is, is he gonna ha uh, have her do the little thief thing where she recreates the crime scene? Now I know exactly how this room was before and after the fire! Good work, detective. Oh, I'm it, sir! I'm an expert at getting people to talk! Wow! You two remind me so much of my father and uncle Bad! What do you mean? As, as prosecutor detective, your dynamic is just like theirs back in the day! Well, don't you worry! I'm gonna find some, I'm gonna find my own wonderful partner someday! And when I do, I'm gonna become a good kind of girl, just like my father, right? Please don't ask me questions to which I have no answers to, Kay. However, I cannot say that it is a truly wonderful thing to find a partner you can trust. Ah, hey, you bet! So what now, Mr. Edgeworth? Well, I'd like to ask you for a favor. Yes, that gadget, Mr. Thief, is it the thing you call your secret weapon? Oh, you little thief! Heh, you can't want to rely on it, aren't you? Well, we haven't used it since the third case, but, you know. I don't need a crutch like that. I'm only asking because I need it for the investigation. For the information Detective gathered and the best ambassador's testimony, I'd like you to please recreate this room as it was during the third floor fire. You got it! Here we go! Dark skies of evening when no other bird dares take wing. One alone remains all seeing. Now, what is the true power of a real modern day Robin Hood? It seems there are other things besides what the ambassador mentioned that have changed. It's possible that we might find the escape route, a person case saw used as well. Oh, what is this? Is it some sort of light show I was not told about? This is the power of a true vigilante. It's recreating the room with the info I inputted. Really? It's certainly one interesting device you have there, Miss Faraday. Ahem, I believe it's about time we return to our investigation. Okay, well what do we have over here? So I'm guessing the white boxes are the way things were... Or like the, th the way things are now and then how they 
the, the thing that's outlined in yellow is how they were at the time. Like for instance, the knife over here, there's an outline around it, but we know that that was take that we know that that was switched around. So the grandfather clock must have been moved. The grandfather clock it was apparently in a different position before the fire. According to the staff members, the clock was flushed against the wall before the fire, sir. Which means that most likely it was moved by someone during the fire. Speaking of which, it's only 11 o'clock now, but I don't hear any chiming. <laughs> That's odd. It was still chiming right in the dawn of every hour this morning. Maybe the fire damaged its internal mechanisms or something. I'm boss of the polyano. Maybe take a look inside that clock. Sure, we go right on the head. Yes, sir, I'm on it. So many cases boil down to some kind of clock. Mr. Roger, they found this inside, sir. It looks like a length of wire, so this is what caused the clock to stop chiming. But what was a long length of wire doing inside this clock in the first place? Why did I judge on my organizer? Alright, well, speaking of the... Speaking of things that were moved... It's only like it wasn't Mr. Palayana that put the wire in there! The perhaps it was Mr. Kojin's killer who did. Speaking of things that, uh... That were moved... How about this knife rack? Looks like one of the bad police knives was already missing before the fire began! So it would seem, especially since the other two knives' handles were burned away. The remaining handle was swapped up with the, the handle from the real murder weapon, and Babel's national treasure was stolen! Poor Babel, don't you think? I'm not sure I would limit the replica statue room with the rest of Babel's woes. Okay then. And then of course, the main attraction would be these flames over here. They must have been the large green flames Ambassador Paliano saw. With things like these, it's no wonder we couldn't get in! Okay, by the time you came into this room, had the fire already been put out? Yeah! The fire had died out or something by that time! Then this fire in here only burned from the time the third, uh, from the time the fire started on the third floor until the Anagrasso appeared and caused a stone babble, I suppose. I guess Mr. Paliano was just lucky enough to run into this fire as it was burning, huh? You should put it that way. And since you were the first to discover the body, we can assume that no one else entered the room until that time. No one other than the person you were chasing, of course. I knew it! The person I saw was definitely up to no good! I mean, that person could even be Mr. Kojin's killer! Now, that's very likely to be the case. After all, must have chosen this room precisely because they knew no one would be in here. Okay, maybe the green fire was where it was to prevent anyone from coming in. But then, what did the person set on fire to make the green flames? Probably the lantern. Hmm. Well, whatever it is, that person burned and made a rather sizable fire. It's just fire screaming. Well, we've seen something that burns green, right? It's a bit tinier than these flames, but you get what I mean. Yes, and I do believe that's what you are thinking is exactly why you swim to green. Which fire? Uh, that would be the lantern that we got. No, oh, no, oh, last page. The silhouette lantern, its green flame comes from the white crystal oil that it's burning. Yeah, that's the fire I was thinking of too! I love the green it gives off! I think we've now established the green flames were caused by white crystal oil. Furthermore, we know that there was only one other thing made from white crystal oil, which would be the ink. Yes, precisely, we found it in an investigation. Um, what? I don't get it, can you feel me answer? Funny, suppose. I was wondering the way you, you can understand. This is the thing which that would be the, the ink bottle we have. Bobbity sink is made from wet crystal oil. Oh, don't you burn the same color as the flames in the lantern, right? Yes, precisely. However, the green flames in this room were not from a bottle of bubbly sink. Because we found the ink that Mr. Coaching used on his desk, right? Yes, however, we know that Mr. Coaching was smuggling the ink in massive quantities. Now, what do you suppose he made using all that ink? I believe we ma what he made was with that ink was the answer to what gave birth to the green flames. Oh yeah! I'm beginning to really feel the energy coming from you, Mr. Edgeworth! Heh, <laughs> it would appear that I finally found it. The smuggling ring's real goal. Made of bubbly sink, this is the source. Of the green flames. Uh. Do we have the source of the green flames? Oh, the. the, the no, no, not that. The. No, not that. Where, where's the, the the counterfeit bills? Where, where are they? they? These, right here. These things right here. Made with. Because the, they're made with bubbly zinc. What would consume that great of a volume of ink to be made? That would be the counterfeit bills that the smuggling ring made and are circling the same thing. You're kidding! You're saying it was Mr. Cochin who made the counterfeit bills? I am. I believe you could even go so far as to say that he stole Bubbles' printing press. I'm boss of Mr. Co uh, yes, and I do remember seeing him using it in the middle of the night, but never did I think he was using it for such a foul deed. Ambassador, because of your secretary's crimes, you wanted to be investigated as well. Ah, uh, yes, I suppose so. We've caused a bit of trouble for a few countries, haven't we? It's my duty to search out all who shielded Mr. Cochin and concealed his crime, for they are the ones who started the fire in order to destroy the evidence. But we didn't start the fire. I'm gonna keep making references like that until the end of this case. I hope you know that. Okay. Uh, we, I guess we, we can talk to Gumshoe. Detective, you took part in the initial bubble investigation, correct? Yep, sure did. I was able to put out both fires, sir. But that first fire took me by surprise. I had a tough time escaping the fifth floor. First, I tried the elevator, but I guess someone else uh, had the same idea because it was in use. If I hadn't remembered to use the stairs at that point, I'd have been burned to a crisp. Wait, that's odd. We always warm our staff, and it's in case of the fire, it's safe to use the elevator. Oh. Maybe someone brought it in to fit a panic? Like, did you see the yellow garage that came into the Babbly Sembassy at all? I didn't personally. And the other staff members told me they never got a good look at the person either, sir. Hmm. 
I wonder if you could tell me a bit more about what you discovered, Detective. The second, the second fire broke out around the time the other was spotted in Albast. That's also when a suspicious person was spotted in Babel, which caused some panic. So no one was able to get a good look at the Seattle Garasso that entered Bubble. Yeah, all I was a mysterious person wearing a long coat. That's not enough to make a positive ID, you know? So it was enough to make the people who received the calling card panic even more. A person in a long coat! That's like the exact same person I saw! The Yard Garasso that appeared in Albus was proven to be just a fabrication, a shadow. In light of that fact, the Yard, the yard Garasso that appeared in the Bubble is also suspect. You can't be serious! Now I'm this close to capturing the fake I'd be close to you! So the Yard Garasso appeared, caused, uh, appeared, caused mass confusion, could be coach, and disappeared. By the way, Detective, why did you not chase after the Yadagavasu? Uh, I did, but, well, the seventh is huge, sir. I got separated from the other staff members I was with and was lost for a while there. You didn't even memorize the layout of the building you were to call, Detective. <laughs> I'll be sure to do that from now on, sir. But you know, it was thanks to me being lost that I was able to come to the case rescue. Oh, is that a fact? Yeah, it was when I was lost and wandering around the third floor hallway, sir. When I heard a scream, I headed toward it right away. Oh, it's only for when I found Mr. Cochin's body. Yeah, I thought it sounded like her, so I got the real word and ran as fast as I could. And it was thanks to Gummy that Miss Sheeta wasn't able, wasn't able to take me away. You counted for me until you got here, Mr. Edgeworth. Oh, I see. So we can be used a once in a blue moon. Still, it's too bad that Agent Sheena got here before I did. Hmm. I wonder what Agent Sheena was before you found her here. Well, as far as I guess before I got to this room, I started coming out of the room next door. Okay, so it's is she gonna be is she gonna be revealed to be the one like the the one who's behind us all along? Wait. Okay. This is like major conspiracy theory, but I'm gonna look up a picture. Callisto U Ace Attorney Investigations. Get a picture of her. I need a picture. No, okay. I, I was thinking, so I, I thought maybe that the, the big reveal will be like they were the same person all along. But their eye, their eye colors are totally, like, the, the hair can be explained because they could just, she could just be wearing a wig. But the, the eye colors are totally different, so there's, that wouldn't be the case. Lips are similar though, lips are definitely similar, but the eye, the eye colors, that, that's the deal breaker there, because they, they have drastically different eye, colored eyes. Okay. Well, it, it, it was a nice theory for the moment, I suppose. But, yeah, no, that, unless she dyed her eyes, which is, that's not how that works, but, I don't know, maybe. Isn't she not mentioned something about causing the other cross with Seth Lillian? Well, she apparently helped put, putting out the first fire. Then during the second fire, her she was busy chasing in the Yadagarasu. She seemed to be a very dedicated agent. You would do well to learn from her. What do you mean when you say that, sir? We've examined everything in this office, but there was one thing that bothers me. Perhaps I should... Ambassador Pagliano, there was something I'd like to ask you about. About this office, it appears to me to be very similar to Ambassador Alba's office. For example, the location of the fireplace and the position of the grandfather clock. Ah, that's right. You've also paid a visit to the Albastian side of the embassy. Our two embassies actually used to be one. Yes, I know. Even the pamphlet mentioned that. Which is why the building is bilateral symmet symmet bilaterally symmetrical. Uh, yeah, that would make sense. But, you know, oh, you know what would also make sense? If they're connect- if they are bilaterally symmetrical, then it would make sense for both fireplaces to have a secret room, like a, a little Last Crusade flip panel. You for your handshake of all over the German Ninja? Yes, that's right. I mean, what's a photo like that worth if it's not taken in the ambassador's office, right? Yet another odd expression of Bubbles' obsessively competitive spirit with Albas, I take it. Thank you, Ambassador. Connect with the- what dots? Yeah, I'm glad I was able to be of some help. Okay. So, uh, connect the fireplaces and the bilateral symmetry. Means there's probably a fireplace in this room as well. The Albastian and Babadi sides of the building are symmetrical to each other. As we know that to be a fact, th then this room's fireplace may also have a secret passageway. A secret passageway? In Albas, the fireplace turned out to have a revolving back wall. A revolving wall? That's like something out of a ninja house! Well, it was a trick that they had onto the fireplace, sir! What? This embassy holds that kind of secret? There seems to be a lot about this room that you don't know about, Miss Ambassador. Please, I really want to know about the real Manny and what you know about this room. What are you waiting for, Mr. Edgeworth? Let's get to the bottom of this! Agreed. And it's my first thought that it is likely the killer used the revolving fireplace. I mean, yeah. And I would I would assume, actually... I Oh, you know what? I would assume, actually... Wait a minute. So, we uh, they saw Sheena coming out of the room... Hold it. Wait. I, it's annoying when you figure something out and you have to wait for the dialogue to conclude before you can... Like, I, I can access the organizer, but I can't access the logic tab. It's annoying. And almost it was... I had to push what the X was. Oh! Oh! Is the next back there, sir? Let's just see what happens when I push it. Ugh, you scared me, sir. There was something about this fireplace that lies a contradiction to the facts. Huh? But we found an X where you, where you thought we'd there be one, right? We did, but that's not what I was referring to. Something is vision from the scene. 
What? What's missing from the scene? What does this contradiction mean for us? Oh, oh, there's no ashes! Because, uh, the ambassador told us that he forgot to clean up the ashes. So, you know where they went. They went, uh, they, they went, like, when the, the fire was, when it was used, uh, that makes sense. Like, they would, they, they would, the whole thing would be switched around. Okay, so let's deduce that. And is this ball somehow connected to the evidence to hold? Yes, it's connected to the testimony we got. I'm also planning you said that you burned some old files in the fireplace today, correct? Yeah, I burned quite a few for the files this morning, actually. And after you did, you forgot to clean the ashes from the fireplace, correct? That's right, but why are you asking? You know, why are you making such a scary face? I'm sorry, I admit what I've been intimidating while I'm serious. In any case, take a good look at this fireplace and tell me when you find out about it. But let's see, huh? Where did all the ashes go? I think I know where they went. I think I know exactly where they went. I think where they went. What's the meaning of this, Mr. Edgeworth? You don't really think the Ambassador Palliano is lying, do you? No, there was no reason for him to lie. And I don't believe his testimony is wrong, either. It is the fireplace that is causing the contradiction. Okay, I wonder if you might update the fireplace data for me. You got it! I'll add in the ashes and the burnt files and... Sounds like we've pretty much figured everything out now, huh? Hmm. Well, it was nothing. All I did was follow where our leads led us. Oh! I sense it coming on! You have to dazzle us again, right? Oh, you mean that? Well, sometimes Rangers is known for, you know. There was really no need for you two to dance around the name of what I'm about to do. All right, so the mission. Uh, where did they go? They went around to the other side. The reason as to why the ashes are missing is simple. It's not because someone cleaned them up, right? No, because even if someone did sweep them up, the fireplace is too clean for that. Ambassador Paliano said that he spilled some Babylonian ink while he was burning these files, and yet there was not a trace of the spilled ink on the back wall anywhere. Well, then I don't know what happened. Wait, I'll tell you what happened. The two sides were switched. By using the revolving fireplace wall, the ashes were moved into the neighboring room. Which means that this is a clear indication that the fireplace was used. Yes, and I get I guarantee you I know who it was used by. Then you mean, the person I was chasing disappeared from this room through there? Yes, I believe this person you were in pursuit of is Mr. Coachman's killer. And after committing the murder, escaped through the fireplace. So then I'm not now. Wow, stranger! Figure out the killer's escape route! Ah, uh, but this is only the beginning. Now I have to chase the killer down. All right then, so where was Sheena? She escaped through the revolving fireplace. Boom. If the killer used the fireplace in this room to escape into the next, then it's only logical for us to talk with the person who was in the neighboring room. Well, the person that was in the next room was, oh, it was that person, sir. It's Detective Agent Sheena. Investigation complete. It's looking more like Mr. Sheena is the killer, isn't it? Let's not jump to conclusions yet. We need to go through what we know so far. She came running straight into this room and from the next one and instantly accused you. Furthermore, she claimed that it could only have been you that killed Mr. Coaching. I don't have any proof yet. However, I know she is hiding something from us. Okay then, why don't we go ask Mr. Sheena herself? No, not yet. There's something that needs to be done first. Detective Gumshu. Sir, is it my turn to do something, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes, I have a two-part special assignment for you. First, I need you to run a handwriting analysis on Damascus Second's note. Okay, I'll get the lab boys on there right away. Second, I want you to see if you can fit through the revolving fireplace wall. R right now, sir? No, next decade. Of course now. We need to test our hypothesis first, don't we? Come on, Gummy, you can do it! Alright, I'm gonna do this like a real man. Here I go. Through the fireplace and back. You shouldn't need to psych yourself up for that much for, for a simple task, detective. Wow, the wall inside the fireplace really did turn. That's so neat. Now I want to go try going through there, too. Th there really is a secret passageway through there. I had no idea. Hmm, it, it would appear that the ash really was pushed into the other room. Furthermore, the bubbly sink you spilled on Barcelona is there on the back wall. Okay, here I go, sir! Detective, I'd like you to go through this under the, this, uh, for, uh, under the same conditions as the killer. Huh? What is all that ash and stuff? And your point is, now we're short on time, so if you could please hurry on through. Huh, yes, sir. Okay, so now I'm going to get the whole picture, right? No, not yet. There remains a few more mysteries to be solved. Such as the Yana Karasa's whereabouts, the other smuggling ring numbers, the two weapons that made it across the border, the key you stole seven years ago. In fact, we haven't even figured out a thing how, regarding how Miss Yu is related to these embassies. Mr. Edgeworth! A number of pieces conducted in a very complicated way in this case. It's almost enough to make it one become one completely mentally exhausted. What are you saying, Mr. Edgeworth? I thought you were the one who said that it's easy that if you follow the leads. Hmm. Was that supposed to be an impression of me, Kay? If it's info gathering you need, come and I can help with that. Then, all you'd have to do is show off your fancy schmancy logical deductions! Show off? Does it seem like I'm being boastful when I do that? That's not how complicated matters, okay, Mr. Edgeworth? We've been self-focused like a laser on only what seems strange and out of place. It's no wonder that if we think things through calmly, the answer should come to us. Okay. That's the thing I say to myself when I'm practicing how to unlock padlocks, you know? There's something that hope 
That I hope doesn't practice doesn't make progress for your sake. Ah! Yay! Looks like you're back to your straight life self again! Hey, Mr. Archer, I'm back, sir! Yes, I can see that. Good work, Detective. <coughs> Are you alright, Gummy? I'm okay. Just a bit of ash and dust, that's all. I'm sure you'll rise from the ashes. Eh, ah, see what I did there? Your jacket has gotten quite filthy. I see the helmet has practically turned black. Yeah, well, quite a bit of unburned ink got on me, sir. Mm, I see. Thank you, Detective. You did a fine job. I'll even pay the cleaning. What? Oh, no, sir, I can never. Just my old coat, sir. If it was a coat I'd actually cared about, then I'd get it clean, but, you know. I see. Very well, then, as you wish. So, because Gunner was able to climb to the fireplace, we know it can be used, right? Yes, well, that's not all we learned. We actually learned one other important fact. And that is? I will have to explain it to you later. Right now, we need to deal with the handwriting analysis. Detective Gumshoe? Yes, sir, I'll be back before you know it. The handwriting analysis on Mr. Cochin's handwriting will take a bit of time. Let us go and wait in the theater to the us, along with Agent Lang and Agent Sheena. Oh, here we go. We're approaching the we're approaching the finale. Middle part three? How long is this case? Oh, okay, I would have thought we were at least gonna get into the end sections, but I guess we're still in the middle. All right, maybe we're not approaching the finale. That'll be it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for next up to catch you all tomorrow for some more Ace Attorney investigations. Miles Edgeworth. Goodbye.